Hello folks, this is Jeffrey Bale. My call sign is NT1K and today we're going to look at a high pass filter. I got one right here. It's from, uh, it's a commercial one that you can find out on the internet. It's from, if I can get focus in here, Industrial Communications Engineers are known as ICE. They're also known as, uh, I think it's Morgan Manufacturing now. This is the Model 401. It's a bandstop BCB filter. It removes 0.5 to 1.6 megahertz. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to hook it up to an analyzer. We're going to inject a signal through it, and we're going to read it with the analyzer and see what happens here. And then we're going to apply this in a situation where you would need a BCB filter or a high-pass filter in general. So we're going to use this uh, mini VNA Pro here. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, let's hook it up. Before he went ahead and, and calibrated all the all the software for these uh, things here, the connectors and and cable, even though they're not best suited for this situation, it's better than nothing. So let's load our VNA J software. There we go. As I said, I already calibrated it. We're going to go into transmission mode. And what we're going to do is our start frequency is going to be at about 100 kilohertz. We'll leave it there. But our stop, uh, our stop frequency, we're going to we're going to look at it over the entire HF portion of the band, just to see what would happen. So let's do a little single pass here. All right, let's get rid of the phase here, and you'll see by looking at the loss. You'll see it goes from zero, then it takes a big steep curve, goes back up. And then it goes pretty fl pretty flat line all the way through the band. So what we're looking on the left is is transmission loss in dB. So we start off at zero, and then we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. So and then on on this direction, we're looking at frequency from 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. So you'll see this big huge dip. So any frequencies that are in that zone, if I put my mouse cursor here, you can see the box. So anything in between, well, around 500 kilohertz to 2 megahertz or around there, or 1.8 megahertz is attenuated. And it passes the higher frequencies above 1.6. That's what makes it a high pass. All the frequencies above 1.6 are passed through the filter. Anything below or in this case, anything between 0.5 to 1.6 is attenuated or removes, uh, so to speak, depending on the source of the signal. So let's take a little closer look at it. So we're going to go in at about 2 megahertz. So we're going to now look at the signal from 100 kilohertz to 2 megahertz. And there we go. You'll see that once again, it starts off around some loss at, um, and then all of a sudden it takes a big steep dive, plateaus, and then gradually climbs back up. So let's take a look. We'll we'll place a marker right where it starts to dive, and we'll place another marker right here where it plateaus. We'll place another marker where it starts to climb, and then we'll place another marker over here. So. If we look at marker one, it starts to take a dive at around 500 kilohertz, just like the filter says. We look at uh, plateaus, or it stops around um, 800 kilohertz with about 52, B, uh, 52 dB of loss. Then we look at marker number three, where it starts to climb back at mm, 1.3 megahertz with still at 43 dB of loss. And then all the way at the end here, around 2 megahertz, we're at about 2 dB of loss. So... Um, this proves that the filter works, and and I'll give you a situation where I need this filter in. Um, for those who do not know what a BCB means, it means broadcast band, so it'll give you an idea of what problems I'm having. So let's close this. We'll terminate it. We'll disconnect the filter here. Okay, so that's... Uh, and that's with that. So we're going to load an, another piece of software here to use with this box I got right here. This is my Ephedri receiver, or AFE DRI. It's not like uh, what is seen on the internet. If you Google it, I bought the board, but I made my own case for it. So 
we're gonna take the ephedra and just we're gonna hook it directly up to my my antenna that is outside of my house and we're gonna power on the ephedra plug the VNA okay so the ephedra is plugged in and powered you can maybe see the lights glowing all right so let's bring in the software and let's load it up let's move this over here and let's hit play and that is what you see <laughs> in my neighborhood if you look at the screen here you'll see all these signals and they're all AM signals no matter what band I go to if I go to 80 meters you see those if I go to if I go to 20 meters it's not so bad but you still see it there it comes and you know if we go to if we go to uh, 10 meters it might not be as bad but you still see you still see it actually it comes in pretty bad so what's happening is is I have three AM broadcasting stations near my house one of them that's about a, less than a mile away from my house has a 5000 watt transmitter during the day transmit about a thousand watts at night um, I have one across the river from me and I have another one at the other side of town which is about two or three miles away from my house so their signals are so powerful that it comes into the ephedra right here and just overloads the front end receiver and it ends up mixing its signal into the uh, into the receiver and that's all you see so a good way to help help this out is by using a a, uh, a high pass filter like this one so you could tell it's an AM station we'll go on AM modulation and we'll turn it up here I think that's uh, WSPR that's right down the street from me looking at the signals here you'll notice that it's the same two or three stations so what we're gonna do now is put the filter in line and see what happens. So let's take this off. Okay. We'll hook it up to the, um, the filter here. Then I'm gonna hook this up. And we're going to lose parts here <laughs> let me see where my other end of my cable is going up oh, we got the wrong one hooked up here okay that's why too many cables here all right let's unhook that I'll hook that up and now the filter is in line with the and you'll see a big difference look at the big difference on that now we can actually zoom in and and look at the band so we were looking at about 300 kilohertz of bandwidth and if, let's go in a little closer and now we actually have you know we can actually listen in on conversations Sean has already checked out uh, WA1ZLE and the main potato net this is N2FKW go ahead Mr. Bell thank you sir what a gentleman Mr. so that, that does a much better John, job John, you have a addition of a filter what, what a filter can do so if we come zoom back at about a megahertz, yep, there is one AM station, but being on 80 meters, I have a feeling that is a, I have a feeling on 80 meters that is an actual amateur AM broadcast. Let's find out. Go to AM modulation. Yeah, it's an amateur radio AM transmitter. So. It just shows that the filters work. The high pass filter works. Shows you the big difference between not using a filter. I'll once again here I'll show you the difference. I'll disconnect this filter and we'll hook the antenna directly to the ephedra. And you can see the all the uh, all the AM stations that are just repeating themselves over and over and over. Especially on 40 meters is just really bad. 
So we can get rid of all these AM stations by, or a lot of the AM stations by simply putting a filter in line with your receiver here. You can buy these filters and you can also make them. They're pretty neat. So there we go. Now we're probably seeing European AM broadcast stations, but I'd rather see those in those getting in than seeing them overload my front end of my uh, receiver. So there we go. That's it. It works. Um, if you have an ephedri and you're having a problem with AM broadcast stations, a high pass filter set for around 1.5 or 1.75 megahertz would would hopefully do the job. Um, you can see what frequencies the AM stations are at, and you can probably design a filter just to notch out those offending stations. That's the great thing about amateur radio and RF electronics is that there's so much help out there and that you can build one of these and, and have it perform exactly the way you need it to. So if you like what you saw, please subscribe, please like, and uh, check out my website at uh, www.nt1k.com. Thank you very much for watching.